Hi, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to configure the Nexus Repository Manager version 3 plugin for Urban Code Deploy. So I've created a new uh, component, just a sample Nexus NuGet component, and we're going to go through and configure the source configuration plugin. So you'll, you'll notice after you install the plugin, this new um, Nexus Repository Manager v3. So we'll check that. And then we want to supply the server URL pointing to the Nexus server. So for me, I have one running locally. So I just have this localhost 8081 repository, or I'm sorry, um, URL for my Nexus server. So I'm going to su supply that. Um, and you can either set up your repositories for anonymous access or you can uh, require credentials. For me, I just set anonymous access, but uh, you may need to supply a username and password, which you can do in these two fields. And so for the repository, um, in this demonstration, I'm going to show off how to import artifacts or NuGet packages into a component version. So I created this NuGet hosted repository that you can see in here. Um, and also this next field um, is not required. It's the component in Nexus. So you'll notice that um, in the Nexus server, um, in your repository, you'll have a list of components. So this nuget.sample package, uh, that will be the component name for this package here. So if we look at the uh, properties set on the package, you'll see the component name as nuget sample package. And when I search, um, in, when the, the plugin runs the search, it can actually query for an individual component name. Now this isn't um, always what you want to do, and that's why it's an optional field uh, of the plugin. But in certain cases, you may have um, a large list of components that exist in the same repository. So I'm going to head over to one of our uh, prod servers to kind of show what I'm talking about in this instance. So it's, we see this um, NPM velocity repository here. So if we open this up, you can see that there's a list of like 11 components. So and each of those have a bunch of different versions here. So what I can do in the um, plugin, if I have something like that, I can specify the specific component that I want to pull packages from. So if I wanted this AMQP client, I could specify the Nexus component AMQP client if I set up my uh, server URL and repository to, hook, to point to our prod um, repository over here. Um, so and if, you, if you're doing that, you'll want to confirm the uh, component name. So if we look at one of these artifacts in here, you can see the component name property as AMQP client. Uh, but in our case, we don't want to do that. We, we just want um, to import all components in the repository. So for us, we just have one single nuget.sample package component and uh, when I just specify the repository name um, I can import all artifacts under that um, or I'm, I'm sorry all component components under that uh, repository so we'll move on to the component group so this um, can reference multiple things in the Nexus server so they, they tried to kind of generalize um, how everything will work for each of the different repository formats. So Maven, for instance, uh, this will reference their uh, group, the group ID of their um, Maven repository. So if we, if I just to kind of jump away from the NuGet uh, hosted repository for a minute, we'll take a look at this uh, Maven public one I created in here. So we'll just take uh, take a sample. Um, sample artifact in here. So if we look at the group over here, this is the group ID uh, in Maven. So it's our Maven group ID. Um, and the component group uh, doesn't really, doesn't have a meaning for certain types of formats. 
For instance, uh, if we go back to our NuGet repository, uh, there is no such thing as a component group in here. So we, we see the properties of this package just as component name, component version. So there's no use in supplying a group. Um, but for certain type, other types as well, this does have a meaning. So the plugin also supports raw types. So if we look at kind of a raw type here, it can be a little complicated. So um, the way that Nexus handles this with raw repository types is it will just treat this component group field as a directory structure. So if I wanted to specify a specific directory in a raw repository, I could do that using the component group field. Um, but in our case, we'll move back to our NuGet repository. Um, so the next uh, property here is this latest version. So the um, one problem with the Nexus REST API, the version 3 REST API, is there's no, um, there's no storage of uh, modified dates or uh, upload dates. So we don't really know chronologically which, uh, which version was uploaded when. So what we've done in the plugin instead is we base this off of the Maven 3 uh, version name conventions. So if we kind of look at the version conventions, and you can go to the um, to this Oracle page. I'll link this in the uh, documentation for the plugin to kind of explain how the versions work. But um, basically, it will treat all of the versions uh, as they work with Maven version 3. And it's very a very robust uh, naming scheme. So you can go through this at your own time, but um, it also supports just um, dots. So if we just if we just have a series of dots in here, 1.0.1.0, .0 .0, um, that will come after 1.0.1, or um, that will come before 1.0.1.1. Um, so th this is another good th thing that's good for. Uh, raw repository types because if we see here in this uh, this example I have for you uh, it will just base these off of the Maven version so 1.1.0 comes before 1.1.2 and then the latest version will be 1.1.2.1 so if I were to specify this latest version tag it would only pull in that 1.1.2.1 if I had it set up for that repository and in our instance it would only pull in the 1.0 dot o dot one eight two seven nine so but for now just for demonstration purposes i'm going to pull in uh, i'm going to import each version and then the last uh, couple fields i want to kind of mention before we run the plugin are the includes and excludes so the way that uh the plugin works and the way that most of our source config plugins work is we'll download all the artifacts uh based on all of these uh search criteria that we've given um, into some temporary working directory. And after we do that, we can then apply these includes and excludes to determine which of these artifacts we want to actually add to a, um, to a version. So for me, I'm just going to specify um, any directory and uh, any file under that directory. So that, that this will just pull in basically everything that I download into that temporary directory that I mentioned. And then one last field here, I've added this, we've added this uh, log4j logging level. So this can be very useful for debugging uh, certain problems that you may come across. So we have it set as a default of info and this will just be simple informational info, uh, informational statements that the plugin will tell you along the way, such as, uh, you know, importing version 1.0.0, uh, downloading this file. But if we run into problems um, and maybe there's a, there's a bug you're trying to figure out or an error, you're not uh, able to download a specific version or something, uh, we can actually enable debug information. So what this will do in this specific plugin, we're using uh, Apache's HTTP 
uh, dependency. So uh, Apache is actually using log4j to print d these debug statements. So if we enable the debug level, uh, it's going to tell us exactly all the HTTP calls that are being made, um, what's being sent as the body, what's being returned, what are the headers, so we can get a lot of information that way and figure out what our problem is. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to keep it as the default informational level. And we'll save this. Um, and so now I'm ready to import my new versions. And remember that I set it to import everything in my repository, since I uh, all versions in the repository, um, and all components as well. So if I just run this import new versions, first it'll ask me if I want to specify a specific version. Um, so maybe I want to specify an old version like 1.0.0. Um, you could do that. But for now I'm just going to import all versions of my uh, NuGet packages. So I'll save here and we can watch as it executes. So as we can see, uh, it found both versions from the Nexus server. And it even lists the search criteria that it used to find those. So the only search criteria I've given it is just the repository name. Um, so it found both versions. Uh, it downloaded files for 1.0.0.0 um, and the other version. and they ran successfully. So if we refresh the page here, we can see my old NuGet package um, and the, also the latest versions NuGet package here. So, and, and, and just to reiterate, if I only wanted every time I run this import just to import the latest version, I could go through my configuration and check this latest version box. So I hope this demonstration has been helpful and will welcome any feedback and suggestions on how to improve the plugin if you have any, uh, anything you want to see. Um, you know, just mention it to us and we'll uh, give you a prompt response.